on this uh, Data Driven Design Day 2019. This is our fifth installation of the Data Driven Design Day events, and I've been uh, kind of lucky to be able to generate this wonderful event uh, for five years now. Um, how many of you have been at any of the previous Data Driven Design Day events? Okay, nice, about half of the people, so we've got uh, kind of loyal fans here. Uh, and those of you who haven't been able to make it uh, previously, oh, I'll uh, kill down the music, by the way, I'm supposed to be shouting competition. Uh, those of you ha who haven't been uh, uh, attending the previous uh, presentations, uh, there's a nice archive. Uh, on the web address data driven design days dot uh, wordpress dot com uh, which basically uh, has almost all of the presentations from the past four years available as a YouTube video so uh, go and check it out uh, also most of the talks from today will appear there later on this year uh, our event has come together um, as a collaborative e effort uh, between the Helsinki Design Week and our sponsors DNA and Frantic Big thanks to both our collaborators. Uh, this year, uh, we've got one special theme, as always, but we have uh, approximately like one half of the program is about more like general data-driven design day, uh, stuff. Then we've got uh, one part from our um, open call for presentations. We're going to have a demo uh, from Alta University User Interfaces Research Group. Uh, it's going to be set up somewhere down in the aisle. I haven't been able to, uh, to see where it is, but you'll find it there during the breaks. Um, and then, uh, this year's theme. Uh, as I actually promised last year, uh, this year we're going to be talking about something weird called as augmented creativity. What does that even mean? Does it mean something? Well, um, in my opinion, what I'm expecting personally is to see some sort of like um, comments, responses, maybe answers to the question about how the kind of new age of artificial intelligence will impact design work. You can kind of see that this is kind of a reflection of a bigger theme that we've got in, uh, ongoing in our society about the different kind of changes that our AI will probably bring about in quite soon. I'll give you one timely example. Um, very difficult question. How many people with mustache do you see in this picture? Anyone dare to venture a guess? Raise your hands if you feel confident. No one? Pia? Yeah, that's true. Uh, zero people. How about this picture? Um, this is actor uh, Nick Offerman. More confidence, people. This is not so difficult. One. Awesome. That's correct answer. But let's look at the following example. Yeah, this was slightly more complicated one because uh, there's actually no humans here. They're only kind of deep fake people with deep fake mustache. Uh, so this video was one of the great uh, illustrators I found recently about this um, nice machine learning te technique called deep learning, which people have been using to create all kinds of rather disturbing videos. At least I still have seen this quite a few times and I still find it deeply disturbing in some way. Um, and so have others. I think uh, the deep fakes have been one of the uh, technologies that's been causing confusion. Just last week uh, in China, they've got a big uh, debate about a service called Zhao, uh, which uh, tried to kind of commercialize this technology, of creating deep fakes in a kind of large scale. Uh, didn't end up very nicely. And of course, well, we've got local uh, uh, producer Ule also gave a shot at this, uh, creating this uh, video of uh, Saul Niinistö. How many of you have seen this? Oh, almost uh, half as well. Uh, I don't think it quite uh, lives to the standards that we just saw, but it's kind of uh, also um, entertaining in its own sake. Uh, and this uh, technology is be becoming quite accessible in a way that um, I also gave my own shot at this. Uh, now we don't have kind of a, 
Okay, now it comes. Uh, of the, our speaker roster, uh, I tried to combine it with this uh, image of uh, real-world superheroes, or how to say, and came up with this kind of wonderful solution. Um, well, this is actually made using a service called deepart.io, which I find kind of entertaining. Um, well, but I think this uh, kind of example is telling you that um, the AI is already having some sort of impact in our society. I think one of the questions that uh, interest people here would be that how uh, or if, when AI will displace human designers. Uh, let me ask you, how many of you here identify yourself as designers? Once more. Now we have actually at least two-thirds. That's what I expected. So I think this question is kind of... Uh, uh, justified in this context, and let me kind of give you my own um, answer or kind of uh, take on this topic, because we know that um, artificial intelligence has been battling humans successfully about for about over 20 years now. I think it all kind of started with the Gary Kasparov's defeat to IBM's Deep Blue in 1996, and has kind of continued in a few other sports as well. And you might ask that. Okay, so uh, humans got defeated, so what? Uh, does it even, do people even play, play chess anymore because computers are superior? What do you think? Does it is it worthwhile? Well, uh, I'll tell you the answer, or at least um, what I think is the answer is that uh, in Kevin Kelly's book, The Inevitable, he claims that there are nowadays more grand, uh, crass, uh, chess grandmasters than ever before, and this is particularly thanks to the fact that people have been now been able to play against much harder opponents and also team up in order to create this kind of superhuman performance, which uh, designer Tom Gruber might call uh, humanistic AI. Okay, um, so that's about that. Um, so I'm kind of a little bit on the same ship with uh, uh, Kevin Kelly here. Uh, but I also like to recommend a few other uh, nice things to read. Um, book also from last year, uh, Kai Fu Lee's book on AI superpowers. It actually has kind of a lot of uh, content on this particular area about the AI and uh, humanity. He's got uh, kind of a little bit stark predictions on how the uh, humans will fare in the near future in terms of he predicts that all kind of repetitive routine and optimizing jobs will be more or less lost to AI in the next uh, 15 years or so. Uh, well, we'll see if that actually comes true or not. Uh, he, on the other hand, he puts a kind of safe mark on complex and creative jobs, which sounds kind of uh, nice for designers. But one thing is for sure, none of the jobs will remain the same uh, in the AI age because he has the kind of different variations of how humans will collaborate with AI depending on what kind of requirements in the jobs they have. But I think this is kind of interesting reading. Uh, if you don't uh, bother to read the whole book, uh, you can uh, watch Kai Fuli's uh, TED talk from last year, which is kind of a strong title, How AI Can Save Humanity, Our Humanity. But I'm not sure if that's kind of true, but um, another nice resource uh, to check out uh, from Google, uh, the Brain Research team has put out this kind of um, people plus AI guidebook. has a lot of uh, design insights if you're uh, designing systems that incorporate AI, uh, worth looking at. And we've also got something else in the coming. Um, uh, this guy called John Maeda, who's been authoring this design in tech report for five years now, and um, he's been quite a lot of... Uh, pushing this concept about computational design, which basically means people who are somewhat um, well uh, aware of this stuff. And he's uh, publishing a book called How to Speak Machine, which is coming up in November, and I think it might be kind of interesting thing in the domain. Uh, and further, as I know there are a lot of fi uh, Finnish designers here, I'd like to make a recommendation, which is totally my own work. Uh, I published a book about the Finnish sauna design, which I wanted to kind of note out, uh, available since June. But that doesn't have anything to do with AI. It's just something that you should read as a good human and a Finnish person. Uh, that's about that. Uh, now we're going to uh, have a little bit of a peek about what will happen today, um, about today's proceedings. Uh, first of all, a few practicalities. I think most of you already managed to enjoy some sort of a, a, a breakfast here. Uh, there's coffee being served uh, several times a day. Uh, you'll find it downstairs as well as the um, toilets. I encourage active audience participation. Uh, what will happen is that we're going to have uh, five minutes of time allocated after each and every talk uh, for your questions. Uh, there should be someone uh, passing the mic around. Uh, so uh, when you want to pa make a question, please uh, shout out very loudly or wait until you get the microphone. Okay. Um, 
the toilets are also located downstairs. We are having a live stream of the event, uh, so unless you want to appear uh, in the YouTube video, don't uh, jump on the stage, please. Um, what else? Uh, there's a uh, free Wi-Fi available. Uh, you'll find the password is rr uh, Porsi. Uh, it's also written in the blackboard uh, at the bottom of this, or at the back of this uh, room. And yeah, now we're almost ready to start. So today we're going to have four sessions. We're going to have uh, three talks in every session and then a break. Uh, we're going to start about data-capable uh, organizations, um, dig a little bit deeper into creativity. Uh, after lunch, we're going to have a very deep dive uh, about data dystopia, utopia, and reality. Let's see what comes out of that. But the idea is that we will surface once more in this kind of a concrete world and talk about the data-driven design in action. But now it's uh, about time to start. We're about five minutes late, but we're going to cut the uh, first uh, coffee break a little bit shorter, and so we get back on the schedule. And um, as we can see here, we are basically expecting to have a keynote next. And the keynote will be uh, delivered uh, coming from um, DNA, our kind sponsors. And it will feature... Um, uh, Ulla jo Jones, uh, the, the head of design from uh, DNA, and uh, Minna Mustakalli, a strategic designer. Welcome, Ulla Minna. Uh, 